old timers that I ran with told me that once World War II broke out, after December of 1941, the whole city changed. That there was not a new car built from 1941 to 1945. Every factory turned to war production. At the Fort Rouge plant, we made PT boats. Detroit became a city that was live, it never slept. That all the plants ran three shifts all the time for war production. Everybody flying but a Negro like me, Uncle Sam says, your place is on the ground. When I fly my airplane, don't want no Negro round. Got my long government letter. Because there were so many jobs and a shortage of workers, during the Second World War, many auto companies or defense manufacturers opened jobs to African Americans for the first time. For black and white. Oh, but when trouble starts, we'll all be in that same big fight. Some of that opening came with a fight. Civil rights organizations put pressure on the auto companies to open up these unionized, well-paying jobs with good benefits to African Americans. My first factory job here was with Ford Motor Company. They had a factory out on Manchester, near Woodward, in Highland Park. It was, I think, their first major assembly plant. I was working at Ford, and I got into an argument with a mouthy young foreman who wasn't much older than me. Really, I think I intimidated him to the point where he thought I was going thrashing, <laughs> say, nicely. <laughs> they fired me okay. right there on the spot. So as I was getting ready to leave the factory, some of the other guys who were working just to volunteer and say, hey, they, I hear they're hiring out to DeSoto. I mean, that's what people would do around this town then. Folk didn't even know you'd be in a market somewhere and they hear you say something about looking for a job and they'd tell you mm -hmm. where they knew mm -hmm. they were hiring. So I left the Ford plant in Highland Park and went directly to this DeSoto plant 